So I think this is going to be part nine of our complete of our complete application in Node.js, Angular, and PostgreSQL. Right now, we've succeeded in building an API. So if I I've started this API uh, by running Node API.js, as you can see right here, and if I go to the browser and enter localhost uh, HTTP localhost at port 3300 if you can touch countries we have a list of countries returned if i go to slash countries slash one we also have one single country if i also want to do posts i can actually use postman to insert a new country so this is so far what we've achieved we've built an api but there is something so far we've been using javascript and we are not able to use the full um, benefit of TypeScript. So we are now going to be switching to TypeScript. We are also going to be using additional modules that helps to do automatic server restarts and a few other things. So let's go ahead now to do the complete setup. So this is going to be part one, the setup of using Node.js and TypeScript. Now we are not going to be using JavaScript. We are going to be using TypeScript because it provides benefits over uh, JavaScript. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the folder of this application and delete everything inside. So if I go to the folder, I can... okay, so I'm going to delete everything in here. So so we, we start from the comp, uh, from the scratch. That's what I want us to do right now. So it's an empty folder right now. So this is where we start from. So an empty folder. If you are joining me for the first time, I've not said it before in this video, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss an update because this is a way I'm making a lesson to complete a complete end-to-end -end full uh, stack application using Angular front-end, middleware or back-end is going to be Node.js. And our database is going to be PostgreSQL and MongoDB as well because I'm going to be teaching you uh, the concept of NoSQL uh, database or document store database uh, and that's, that will be MongoDB. So please subscribe and also leave me a comment. Let me know what you want me to do um, or some difficulties you may be having. Please let me know in the comment box below this video. Okay, uh, let's go ahead to get started now. The step-by-step -step is also here. Everything we are going to be doing, the, all the code snippets, I have it here on my website. You can find the link to the website in the description box of this video. And also the complete application to the extent we are, to the point we are, is available in GitHub. You can also find the link of to the GitHub repository in the uh, description of this video. Also try to reach me, follow me on GitHub, follow me on Instagram and all that social network profiles and that way you connect with me and if you have challenges I can always help you. So let's follow the steps and this is exactly the step I will be following so it's, everybody can follow it because I've actually made it so easy. So the first thing we want to do is to initialize um, this application so uh, initialize a new node application and to do that we are going to say npm init so in my command prompt, I'm going to enter the command npm init npm in, uh, npm So let me do npm install first, install So it's going to set up the basic uh, node module So if I drop down here, I should be able to Okay, so I need npm init first npm init Okay, so it says package name is okay, our version is okay, description is node backend for fleet msv3. Entry point, we can actually leave it as the way it is for now. Test command should be okay. Um, so the git repository should be the same keywords, auto is kind of the tech pro. Alright, so yes. So we have the uh, node initialized. Now you can see we have a package.json that con JSON that contains the parameters of the uh, basics of this application. So at this point I can actually now do npm install. Okay, so let's now see the next thing we want to do. We have, we have to install TypeScript because TypeScript is actually the 
uh, language we are going to be using. In the, in the background, it's going to TypeScript code is going to actually be converted to JavaScript. So install TypeScript will be um, npm uh, npm install uh, TypeScript. Uh, I think I should install it globally by using minor g TypeScript. Um, so I need to use sudo because I'm installing globally sudo. So we also need to install TS node. Um, TS node. npm install TS node. So if you want to uh, know what this, all these modules are all about, you can actually check the documentation. TS node. So it says um, TS node is a TypeScript execution engine and RPL, REPL for Node.js. It transforms TypeScript to JavaScript, that's TS node. Just in case you want to know, you just can actually just read them. Okay, so we have the next one is uh, Express. Express is a, a, uh, a module that helps us to perform HTTP uh, in Node.js. That's request response. So I'm going to say, um, Express. Now you can actually in npm install and put all the things in the same line, but for now let's just do it one, one by one because um, so that you don't get things com complicated. Type slash express. Again, you can actually check what types. Uh, types um, slash express. So this is a uh, says. Type the TypeScript definition for Express. So, and finally, we need to install NodeMon. NodeMon helps us to monitor changes in the file system and restart the server when changes occur. NodeMon. Okay. All right. So we have a little more uh, updates to make. Uh, in this case, we want to initialize TypeScript using the command tsc init. I uh, want to initialize the TS config. That's basically the configuration for TypeScript of TypeScript for this node application. So I'm going to say TSC uh, minus init. Okay, so it created, it should create a file called ts.json, uh, tsconfig.json. So this file is really very important. So in this file, I want to check that all these things are set correctly. So the first one is for, let me just take out all this. So we have force consistency caching to be true. So I'm going to use con command F. Use command F, sorry. F. Force consistency. So this is this one is true. And I also have the module command that yes, you can see is also uh, correct. ES module interrupt. Let's check this one. ES module interrupt that is true. And else out directory. So in this case, you want to also take note that output directory um, we I'll use it. I'll use slash build. Okay, when this application is built to be deployed, this is where the um, uh, build files, the JS files, and other artifacts will be placed for deployment. So we also have root directory. Uh, we need to set it as well. Root dir. In this case, I want to use uh, best practice requires that your root directory should have the name src, which means source files. So I'm going to say my root directory is going to be src, scr, src. And the target, the target uh, should be, let me see, target. So target ES2016, actually, you can actually leave it this way, but Beyond, just to make sure I follow the procedure I've set out by myself, this is what works. Um, so this is fine. And the next thing is um, skip, skip, uh, skip, skip live check. Uh, you can see skip live check is true. And finally, strict is true, as you can see right here. All right. So we need to make one more configuration before we actually start working. Now we need to modify the package.json uh, to specify the startup file and also uh, the script that's going to make sure that the, the server 
automatically restarts when it changes is not uh, is not um, when it changes when changes are detected in our file. So in this case, we will be using NodeMon. And if I go to my packet.json file, so in the main, uh, where is, we have the main index.js. Now the main index.js, we will be changing it to src server.ts. Um, so it means that I'm going to copy this and paste. Um, so instead of using main index.js, I'm going to use uh, server.ts, but in this case, let me just explain something to you. Now I have a file called server that's server.ts that actually executes when the application starts up. And this is going to be in the src folder, it's not in the source folder, but in the src folder. And in case of the script, we have to specify the dev should be node mount and it's monitoring the uh, changes to restart the server. So I'm going to replace this with what I have, like this. So let me just increase it so that you can see what is happening. So here we have dev, node mount, source, src. So it's going to be src here. So this is where our server is located that is going to be restarted when changes are called. Um, so it means that once this works, um, with the above code, the TypeScript file will be built and compiled into JavaScript. Okay, so now we've actually completed the initial setup. So it means that we can actually run this application using npm run dev. But for now, we don't have any server, so um, it will not work. But just, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to say npm run dev. And nothing works because it, does, it did not see the uh, server.ts file. So this is where I'm going to be stopping this initial setup. Once you've got to this point, you've completed the setup. Then we are going to now start creating this, uh, the directory structure as well as the files for this application. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and also leave me a comment if you have any challenges or if you just want to motivate me, leave me a comment as well, buy me a coffee and support me in other ways. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.